Hey guys, Frazzle Gamer here. Uh, today we're going to talk about Mega Man 5. Uh, this is a Mega Man game, so it's fun. Um, it's of higher quality than most games on the NES. Uh, even though it, you know, follows that same specific formula that a lot of Mega Man games follow. Uh, it's still great. It's still a good game. Um, my brother actually got this for his birthday one year. Not really sure why, because he wasn't as big of a Mega Man fan as I was. Um, but uh, we enjoyed it nonetheless. Uh, this isn't the same cart that uh, he had years ago. I had sold that um, sometime within the great video game purge of 2004 or whatever year that was. I sold all my games. Um, but uh, I picked this one up for a lot better of a price than you're seeing online right now. As of the time this video is recorded, you can probably get it from, you know, anywhere from $75 to $95 uh, online, or I see I saw it in the wild a couple days ago for $95. It's freaking crazy. I'm just really glad that uh, I was able to pick this up for a lot less than that. So, um, yeah, let's uh, take a look at Mega Man 5. Mega Man 5 starts out with probably the best intro scene from the original Mega Man series. Proto Man, who helped out Mega Man in the last game, has kidnapped Dr. Light and sent eight Robot Masters to wreak havoc on the world. We all know where this is going. It's actually Dr. Wily behind it all. Big surprise, and I don't feel bad about spoiling it. Mega Man has to fight his way through Gravity Man, Gyro Man, Crystal Man, Napalm Man, Stone Man, Charge Man, Wave Man and Star Man before taking on Proto Man at his castle. During the final fight, the real Proto Man appears and reveals the imposter. After Mega Man defeats the imposter named Dark Man, Wily admits it was him all along. Again, I don't feel bad about spoiling this for anyone, and sorry to all two of you out there who didn't see that coming. Gameplay in Mega Man 5 is pretty standard for a Mega Man game, though a few new features were added. Cool additions such as the Gravity and Gravity Man stage and the Jet Ski and Wave Man stage attempt to keep the gameplay fresh. These additions do not feel out of place at all in the Mega Man universe and are welcome additions. I feel like either of these mechanics could have shown up again in either Proto Man's or Wily's castle. Capcom could have made those segments a bit harder in the castles to mix things up a bit. I feel like this was kind of a missed opportunity. Anyway, the game plays like a Mega Man game, meaning you get solid platforming action throughout. One thing about the gameplay that I feel Capcom improved on is the fact that Mega Man loses his charge shot if he gets hit while charging. It nerfs the Mega Buster and gives the use of it a bit more of a strategic element. In Mega Man 4, it felt like you always had to have a Buster shot charging to kill certain enemies. That really isn't so in Mega Man 5. The Mega Buster also seems to have a wider hitbox, so that's nice as well. The boss weapons don't seem very useful in this game. Charge Man's weapon pretty much allows Mega Man to damage enemies by sliding into them. It may be useful for speedruns, but I'm not sure. Stone Man's weapon is unwieldy and doesn't seem all that powerful compared to a charged Mega Buster shot. Wave Man's weapon is limited to use on the ground only. Starman's weapon is a shield, and it's an okay implementation, I guess, but it's not the best one. Gravity Man's weapon is a screen nuke that only has limited weapon energy. Gyro Man's weapon would be more useful if it controlled a bit better. Crystal Man's weapon shoots straight forward and splits into multiple shots that bounce around the screen when it hits a wall. I'd still use the Mega Buster instead. Napalm Man's weapon is limited in range. None of them are really all that useful compared to past Mega Man games. One other small gripe I have about Mega Man 5 is its difficulty. Difficulty in that it isn't that difficult. It's a breeze to play through, especially with the incredible frequency of 1-up drops. The level design is very good, but there are only a few areas that really challenge you. This can be seen as a positive, however, especially if you thought the earlier Mega Man titles were too hard. That also might just be my skewed opinion. I'm not sure. What do you think? Mega Man 5 is the first game to include Beat, the robot bird friend that charges after any enemy on screen. Beat actually can be pretty useful to hit some of those enemies that you really can't hit with your Mega Buster because they're too far out of reach. 
Beat also makes short work of Wily's final form. Rush no longer has a marine option, and his coil ability has changed a bit. He bounces with Mega Man now, and it feels a bit odd after using his original coil in the past two games. The Super Arrow is kind of useful. It hits hard and it sticks to the walls, allowing Mega Man to use it as a platform. Mega Man can also ride it, and it goes pretty fast, so hang on. The graphics in Mega Man 5 are probably the best in the NES series. The scrolling backgrounds in some stages look really cool. The stages are incredibly detailed compared to other games in the series. The enemies are all super detailed and look great. This also feels like the most colorful Mega Man game in the NES series. It just looks really good for an NES game. The music is underrated in my opinion. Everyone always cites Mega Man 2 and Mega Man 3 as the games in the series with the best tracks. They may be right, but Mega Man 5 has some awesome tunes as well. Gyro Man's stage is fantastic. Charge Man's stage is really good as well, and it includes a sound effect that makes the fact that you are riding on a train even more believable. Proto Man's castle music is great, and some of the best castle music in the series. Seriously, who can't love this? So Mega Man 5 could have been the best Mega Man game on the NES if not for one simple reason, uh, and that's the Robot Master weapons that Mega Man collects. Uh, they're just not as good or not as imaginative or fun as they were in past Mega Man games. Now, that being said, it's still a really good game, and I still have a lot of fun playing it, and you know, outside of Mega Man 1, 2, or 3, this is my go-to to play. Um, so I guess my fourth favorite on, on the uh, on the system. Um, but uh, I highly recommend playing it if you can get a hold of it. Now, like I said earlier, you know, this goes for a pretty, pretty hefty price uh, right now if you're going to get a physical copy. So I would highly recommend downloading it on the Virtual Console. I know it's on the 3DS Virtual Console. I'm not sure, but I'm almost almost 100% positive that it's on the Wii U Virtual Console. And I would highly recommend playing it that way, unless you're like me and crazy and want to spend an exorbitant amount of money on Mega Man games on the NES. Um, but uh, that's all I can say about Mega Man 5. Uh, later.